In the opinion of many, Leonardo da Vinci was one of the most important artists from the Renaissance era. Over the course of that period, he was responsible for several famous works, including the beautiful Diversion of the Rocks. But in August 2019, though, a group of specialists made an incredible discovery beneath the painting's canvas that amazed the world. Da Vinci grew up in Venice, Italy, alongside various members of his family after his birth in 1452, after moving to Florence. And in the years after that, the artist would go on to produce some remarkable paintings, such as The Last Supper and The Mona Lisa. However, his famous work didn't end there. Indeed, Da Vinci was also behind two similar pieces called The Virgin of the Rocks. These particular paintings depicted Jesus Christ and his mother Mary, along with an angel and John the Baptist. The older version is currently displayed in the world-famous Louvre Museum in Paris, France, while the second is housed in the National Gallery in London, England. Interestingly, an intriguing discovery was made about the latter work back in 2005. During that period, experts at the National Gallery found an alternative composition of the Virgin underneath the painting. Then, some 14 years later, a larger revision came to light thanks to an ambitious research project. During our younger years, we were given the opportunity to learn more about certain aspects of our history. Whether it's through our families or our time at school, these lessons can be incredibly fascinating. But for some of us, though, those teachings weren't truly appreciated until we visited such places as museums. Those trips often provided invaluable, as they provided us with a first-hand look at items from the past. For that reason alone, museums are still very popular for people of all ages today. Meanwhile, galleries offer a very similar experience to their patrons, many of whom no doubt hope to learn the more about historical art. Indeed, in various galleries around the world, people are able to view the work of some of the most famous artists in history. On that front, Leonardo da Vinci is arguably one of the biggest names of all, as he produced several masterpieces during his time. However, da Vinci's talents extended beyond his paintbrush. Following da Vinci's birth in 1452, he lived with his mom in a village named Anciano, located in Tuscany in modern-day Italy. Then, a few years later, the youngster moved with his dad, Piero Fiorentino di Antonio da Vinci, who plied his trade in the legal sector. And during the time in Venice, he also stayed with his uncle and grandparents too. Off the back of that period, da Vinci's family went on to pack their bags for Florence in 1460s, which led to a pivotal moment. Not long after their move, the teenager earned a position under the celebrated artist Andrea del Verrocchio. He subsequently spent around three years working as a studio boy for the painter ahead of a significant promotion. Age 17, da Vinci was named as one of Verrocchio's apprentices, learning plenty of lessons along the way. While working at the studio, he dived into several different subjects including chemistry, woodwork and craftsmanship. In addition to that, the Florence residents also honed his skills in painting, modeling and drawing. While da Vinci continued to develop his skills in Verrocchio's studio, the latter was working on a piece known as the Baptism of Christ. And in keeping with his other works, the master employed the help of his apprentice while putting the painting together. As a result of that, it's believed that da Vinci was responsible for one of the angels in the picture. To the da Vinci's efforts in the workshop, he was eventually named a member of the Guild of St. Luke in 1472. Along that success, his dad bought a studio for him as well. But the painter had other ideas. Instead of striking down on his own at the time, da Vinci resolved to stay alongside his mentor. So on that note, da Vinci remained in Verrocchio's studio and worked on the same pieces with him. However, that didn't stop the Venice native from producing his own work during that period, starting in 1473. That year, he produced a picture of Tuscany's Arno River with his pen. Then, a few years later, da Vinci's career took an exciting turn as he was tasked to work on a painting to sit about an altar in 1478. The work was intended to be hung in the chapel located inside the Palazzo Vecchio, Florence's administrative hub. But while he was working on that, the former apprentice was also asked by monks for another project in 1481, a painting titled The Adoration of Maggie. Da Vinci continued to work on those pieces for another 12 months before he made a bold decision. The artist opted to give up the two jobs in 1482 as he chased down a different opportunity with Ludovico Sforza, the future Duke of Milan. From there, he packed his bags and headed for the famous Italian city. Once Da Vinci arrived, he went on to make Milan his home for the next 17 years as he worked on numerous jobs for Sforza. In addition to that, the multi-talented painter was asked to produce some other pieces as well, leading to an important period. As it turned out, two of those works would help cement his name in history. 
To begin with, Da Vinci worked on the first, the Virgin of the Rocks painting, completing the job in mid-1480s. Then he produced the Last Supper a few years later for a monastery, the Santa Maria delle Grazie. Following those efforts, he eventually went back to Florence at the turn of the new century. After that, Da Vinci continued to produce some other famous pieces of work, including the now world-renowned Mona Lisa. During that period, he also painted the second version of the Virgin of the Rocks, which shared a number of similarities to the original. However, when the artist reached his mid-60s, he began to encounter a few difficulties. Unfortunately for Da Vinci, his health started to deteriorate at that point, his right hand becoming paralyzed. Despite those issues, though, he pressed on as best as he could before his condition left him confined to his bed. Sadly, the polymath eventually passed away in May 1519. Despite centuries having passed since Da Vinci's death, his work continues to fascinate people across the globe. And while the Mona Lisa still attracts millions of visitors to the Louvre in Paris, the Virgin of Rocks is another very popular piece. In fact, the two near-identical paintings have inspired plenty of discussions between art lovers over the years. By way of illustration, after the National Gallery shared a picture of the second painting on its Facebook page in 2016, a couple of users offered up some interesting insights. One of my faves wrote the first individual. Love the copy in the Louvre too, although technically this is a copy of that one. The social media users continued. After Da Vinci painted that one in the Louvre, he was asked to do a copy of an English noble. And by the time he got around doing it, his technique had changed. The one in the Louvre is painted with brushes. The one in the National Gallery is painted with his fingertips. The user's insight didn't end here. Though, as they made one last point in the comment section, they added, you can see Da Vinci's fingerprints all over it. This was because he said he realized that his talent was God-given and the brush was just an encumbrance between him and God. That admiration was shared by a fellow social media user on Facebook who offered their own thoughts on the painting. In other comments, they also looked at one of the key differences between the pieces in London and Paris as well. And according to them, that particular detail was fairly significant. Always loved this painting and the older version of the Louvre, but this one is much stronger and real to me. The user wrote, Also, I'd prefer not to have the angel's right hand pointing across, as in the Louvre's version, because I think it just distracts from Mary's beautifully foreshortened hand. Da Vinci is so cool. Meanwhile, as fans continued to hail Da Vinci's work on those paintings down the years, some stunning news came to light back in 2005. That year, a group of researchers at the National Gallery discovered a sketch underneath the piece. As it turned out, it was an alternative composition of Mary in another position. The incredible find was made thanks to the use of infrared techniques. With the experts picking up on some other outlines, then at the start of 2019, more research was conducted by the gallery as it prepared to open up new exhibitions. However, few people could have predicted that would be revealed. In their most recent examination, the group of researchers scanned the painting exploiting a new technique known as macro X-ray fluorescence. This meant they were able to uncover more of Da Vinci's initial sketches beneath the piece. This was made possible due to the drawing material that artists had used, which included traces of zinc. Thanks to those scans, the experts could see additional drawings of both Jesus and the angel alongside the previous sketches of Mary. A representative of the National Gallery spoke to UK newspaper The Guardian about the discovery. Why Leonardo abandoned this first composition still remains a mystery, they said in August 2019. The spokesperson continued, handprints resulting from patting down the priming on the panel to create an even layer for more or less uniform thickness can also be seen, probably the work of an assistant, but perhaps even by Leonardo himself. That was an old as they touched upon the composition itself. But figures are positioned higher up in the drawing. The representative added, while the angel facing out is looking downward on the infant Christ with what appears to be a much tighter embrace. A short time after that, the gallery's conservation head, Larry Keat, shared his reaction to the findings. During an interview with BBC News in August 2019, Keith explained what the discovery signified to him about the painter's process. The sketch gives new insight to how Da Vinci was thinking, he said. It fits into a wider narrative of how we understand him as an artist who is always changing, adjusting and revisiting. Keith added, we had an awareness of part of the composition and now we have a great deal more understanding of the whole group of arrangement. As for the exhibition, the piece will play a starring role at the National Gallery with guests being given the chance to look at Da Vinci's work. The exhibition is due to open in November 2019 and will stay open for around two months. Titled Leonardo experience a masterpiece. It will take place within four different rooms at the gallery, noting various points about the piece. 
Then, to conclude the showcase, Da Vinci's masterpiece will be on display in the final room. Furthermore, this particular exhibition has been put together by Booth National Gallery at 59 Productions. The latter company is already highly regarded in the creative industry, having been involved in various other projects. For instance, it had in hand in the opening ceremony of the London Olympics in 2012. So ahead of the grand opening in November, 59 Productions' managing director explained what visitors could expect from the showcase. It's somewhere between an exhibition and experience, Richard Slantley told the Guardian newspaper in August 2019. After that, she shed some light on why only focus on one particular piece. Slantley continued, Da Vinci's view of the world meant he was fascinated at looking deeply into anything that interested him, and by giving people the chance to refocus on one painting, we're allowing people to do the same thing. It's a bit like mindfulness in a way, as it slows things down and people can focus on one thing. Slantley's thoughts on that matter didn't end there either, as he made another interesting point about the project at the National Gallery. This is a scholarly research that has been turned into an experience that feels theatrical. The managing director added to the newspaper, you're learning by seeing rather than reading a paper. Meanwhile, Da Vinci's hidden artwork wasn't the only fascinating discovery made in 2019. For you see, back in May, a hand-drawn self-portrait of the artist was uncovered in Queen Elizabeth's royal collection, which contained many of his sketches. And as it turned out, that was just the second known picture of him. With that in mind, Martin Clayton of the Royal Collection Trust offered his take on the find. It's a very quick casual sketch of Leonardo, he told The Guardian. It is the closest that we get to a snapshot of Leonardo during his own lifetime. It may be trivial as a work of art, but it's hugely important as a record of the man himself.